Hi! I have this multimeter that I like to call a multi-multimeter because besides the usual electrical stuff, it can measure light and sound level. Quite unusual for an inexpensive multimeter. I wonder if it is good enough to be a cheap alternative to dedicated lux and decibel meters for hobby use. Or perhaps you are better off by just installing some free apps on your smartphone. Time for some testing. Can you guess how good or bad the multi-multimeter and smartphone are compared to true meters? Let's find out. No big issues this time. Just be aware that high wattage halogen lamps will get very hot and emit UVC if used without the glass filter in front of them. And remember that prolonged exposure to loud sounds can cause hearing loss. Let's start with measuring the intensity of light in LUX. I will use this 400 watts halogen floodlight in a setup that should be easy to measure consistently for me and the meters. After warming up, the light intensity should only vary with wattage of the lamp. An incandescent lamp is a simple resistor, so the wattage is dependent on mains voltage, which I will monitor in the tests. First, I will measure the light with a dedicated LUX meter to compare the others with. Okay, wish I had a more stable mains electricity, but looks like it is roughly 6400 LUX at 359 watts and 6500 LUX at 364 watts. And within the limited voltage range of mains electricity, I can assume that 1% more watts equals 1% more light output. How will the multimeter compare to this? Well, not easy to read without casting a shadow on the sensor right next to the screen, but we are around 6300 lux at a little higher wattage. So it is measuring a bit lower than the lux meter. What about the smartphone? Alright, it is a bit more optimistic and reads higher even though the wattage is down. But for me, it is surprisingly close. How can the phone be this close to a dedicated lux meter? I can't find a light sensor in the service menu. After a deeper dive, it turns out that the app is using a light sensor built into the phone. That sensor just has its own service menu together with the proximity sensor. Not bad for a sensor only meant for adjusting the screen's brightness. Let's go further with a more challenging RGB LED lamp. For the true LUX meter, I can add correction factors, depending on the light source, for a more accurate reading. I can't on the multimeter and smartphone. This is interesting. For the white light, they are all close enough. The smartphone is closer than the multimeter for this cool bluish white than it was with the warm white from the halogen lamp. The smartphone seems to favor deep red light. It is way too high under the red LED light and also was highest under the halogen lamp, which emits a lot of deep red and near infrared. Digging a little deeper into this, I quickly tried a fur test with a primarily near-infrared lamp. The lux meter and multimeter are fairly close, considering the difficult light. How about the smartphone? Again, way over the others. I wonder why? My guess is that the light meter is part of the proximity sensor and optimized for that. It measures proximity by sending out infrared light around 940 nanometers and looks for a reflection of that light. If the light sensor has to pick up this invisible infrared, it may not be filtered or corrected well enough in the deep red and near infrared to match the sensitivity of human eyes, like a proper lux reading should be. Anyway, for measuring white light, I'd say both the multi-multimeter and smartphone are adequate for hobby use. They perform better than I expected. Just don't use them for colored light. 
Before I test how well they measure sound level pressure, decibels, I have some people to thank. A big thanks to all my patrons. With your support, I was able to buy the LOX meter, sound level meter and spectrometer, making this video possible. If you want to help me make more videos like this one, check out the Patreon link in the description. You will also get full access to my bonus content for just a dollar a month. Thank you. Time to measure sound instead. Quite weird to do this with the same two devices I used for measuring light. They sure are multi-tools. However, right off the bat, there is a limitation. The multimeter will only measure C-weighted decibels. The free version of the app I chose for the smartphone will not, so I can't compare them directly to each other. Luckily, the dedicated sound level meter will do A, C and Z weightings as a reference for both. I will start with a simple test. A standard 1 kHz sine wave tone. First in decibel C with the sound meter. 90.2 dBc. Now for the multimeter. <laughs> yeah, it is not starting well for the multimeter. The microphone is in an awkward place, but I can work around it. Ninety one point seven DBC. Not that far off. Under perfect conditions, your ears can only just tell a difference of 1 dB, so the 1.5 dB difference between the two is not terrible. Better than guessing. Maybe the larger, more flat front of the multimeter facing the speaker caused more reflections going back and forth, increasing the volume. Now for the smartphone, this time in A weighting. 89.8 dBA on the sound level meter. Will the phone be more than 1.5 dB off? Wait, what? Not only is the reading very, very close, the spectrum analyzer peak is also spot on. Click like if you're as pleasantly surprised as me over this result. This is looking bad for the multimeter. Especially since my particular unit reads around 60 decibels in even the quietest room. It is supposed to go down to 35 dB, not 60. Hmm, moving on. I will step it up to a more difficult test with dynamic music. Once again, the multimeter seems to measure a little higher. Roughly plus 3 dB in peak average. Maybe from more reflections. Maybe from being more prone to picking up bass vibration from the table. Or maybe just a calibration issue. How about the smartphone? Hmm, it is measuring a lot higher. But I think I know why when looking at the spectrum analyzer. I had the treble cranked to max on the speakers and the smartphone measures a much wider frequency range than the other two. I guess from having a faster processor to calculate the fast Fourier transform in real time. It simply includes more of the music than the others. According to the app, it is measuring from 0 to 22,050 Hz. Might be a bit optimistic at the low ends, but I do believe it at the high ends. Check this out. An induction cooker is running a coil at a high ultrasonic frequency. Notice how the meters change, or not, when I turn the heating coil on. Only the smartphone noticed the high-pitched noise, peaking at an ultrasonic 20,500 Hz. Its reading went up by around 25 dB set. The other two more or less ignored the high-pitched noise that even my old ears can hear some of. The peak frequency is also confirmed by the audio recording from my video camera. Alright, much to my surprise, the smartphone is absolutely crushing the multi-multimeter in the decibel tests. In many situations, the smartphone is matching or even outperforming my genuine sound level meter. And the live graphs are a big bonus too. 
before my final thoughts, I have a great tip on where you can learn more about the nature of light and sound. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app that teaches you how to think like a scientist with interactive courses and challenges. For example, in their course Waves and Light, that will help you understand the nature of waves, including light and sound. Brilliant's hands-on learning style and interactive challenges will give you a deep understanding of the various terms and concepts involved. This way, you will be able to work out the stunning conclusions on your own. I'm a fan of science and always like learning more about it. If you are like me, then I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash brainiac75 and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 200 people using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can do more crazy stuff without any safety warnings from me. Going into this, I expected the inexpensive multimeter to perform poorly, thinking it is trying to do too much in a single unit. I was however hoping it at least would perform better than some free apps on a cell phone. Turns out I was wrong, in several ways. For hobby use, the LOX function on the multimeter is usable, for white light. The decibel function, not so much. It is way too limited in my opinion. On the other hand, a modern smartphone with a dedicated light meter is a surprisingly good alternative. It can be used as a LOX meter for white light too. And as a decibel meter with the right combination of phone model and app. It is amazing. Makes me wonder how good the magnetic sensor in my phone is. Am I carrying a decent free access gauss meter in my pocket? Comment if you want me to make a video about it. And remember to subscribe and turn on all notifications with the bell to get notified of my video uploads. In any case, thanks for watching. Bye for now.